Maybe you mentioned that it was a pretty competitive practice today, and I just wondered what you were hoping to get out of it ahead of these eight seeding games, and if, you, if it was related at all to just a, a summary of the three scrimmage games and, and what you guys have been able to do so far. Yeah, I mean, it was a typical, uh, typical practice before, uh, before a game. We, we covered the opponent uh, a little bit, and we got a little bit of live work in, um, but I was careful not to overdo it. You know, with uh, with our first uh, a meaningful seeding game uh, coming tomorrow. Is that it, Mike? Yep, thanks. Uh, Anthony. Yeah, Coach. I mean, this honestly may be a better question for about a week or two from now. But this is kind of a unique, obviously, setting where all the games are in the same place. Um, you have a lot of options down at the eight seed to potentially play. When it gets closer to the playoffs, do you envision yourself like going down and trying to scout the games? Will that be allowed? And, and how different could that be from a scouting perspective? Yeah, we'll have uh, we'll have personnel scouting those games uh, when it when our opponent becomes more clear. Um, if time permits, I could see myself going to a game or two. But um, you know, we have scouts that it's their job to put together the game plan. And often in these situations, you're only allowed one seat. So. Um, you know, we'll, we'll just play it by year, but I could see myself going to some games for sure. How helpful would that be for for you? I mean, like to actually, you know, literally maybe be able to watch your next playoff opponent, like two of their, you know, final few games. Yeah, you, can, you, you see a couple little different nuances. I mean, it's really not all that different than seeing it on TV. Um, you're able to watch the point guard and the coach full time, you know, if you're looking for play calls and whatnot. But, you know, every, every team in the league uh, does this sort of thing uh, with every game. So it's, uh, I don't think it's going to be that, that different here than it would be in a normal regular season. Okay, we're going to go with Kyle Goon. Um, Frank, how, how much was it of a relief was it to have AD back in practice today? And, and what did you see out of him, I guess, wearing some, some glasses, some goggles? What was going on with that? Yeah, he looked better than anybody that's ever worn them. I mean, it's a style. <laughs> it's a style thing. So, you know, we have a, a good-looking superstar that looks great in glasses uh, or goggles or whatever you want to call those things. And, um, Rex yes, Bex. Rex Bex. It was great to have him back out there. Um, you know, obviously, you know, it's still going to be dependent on, on uh, you know, his evaluation tonight, how he feels uh, overnight, you know, how the eyes feel tomorrow. Tanya Ganguly. Do you think it's going to be hard for, uh, there's a lot of guys that really like thrive on the pressure of playoffs and, and um, you know, enjoy that sort of like, new intensity um, that comes with it. Do you think in this environment it's going to be hard to, to have that same feeling? I don't know. You know, I think once, uh, once you're in the playoffs, you know the stakes, you know, and I, I think that uh, that drives elite players more than the actual crowd. But, uh, you know, this is unprecedented. So, you know, we'll see how that plays out. I would imagine that, you know, once we get in, in, those, in those games, in particular, uh, when you have a line in a locker room like LeBron James, you know, everything's going to be done on point. The focus is going to be super heightened. And, uh, you know, I expect uh, our guys to, to rise the challenge, the same as it would, it would be if, uh, if we were playing in front of a big crowd. Kyle Goon? Oh, oh did I get Kyle? I'm sorry, Joe. I'm sorry, Skip I'm looking Joe. in that direction. <laughs> All right, you played the Clippers to open the year. You played them on Christmas. They were your last win. And now, you know, after all this weirdness, you're going to see them again. But they, they're missing three of their best guys. Like just, does this game mean anything? Does it mean something, given all of the stakes and all of the context that I just laid out? Like, what, what does this game mean to you? Well, it's the first of the seeding games, and our, our mission with, with these eight games is to get ready to, for the playoffs and be as healthy as possible. But we do have great respect for their organization and the team they've put together. They're one of the best teams in the league. So, uh, you know, more than anything, I think it's, uh, it's going to be a great measuring stick for where we're at. Um, you know, obviously, we still have a long way to go until we're playoff ready. And, you know, this, you, you don't. You don't sharpen yourselves as well against uh, teams of lesser uh, opponent, you know, a lesser opponent than you would against a, a great team. So, um, you know, it's def definitely going to be a good test for us. Okay, Jared. Kind of along the same lines, Coach. We had spoken about at, at around like the 55 game mark how you wanted to have your minutes for players and how you wanted to use them getting ready for the playoffs. How much different will these eight games be as the first eight games rather than the last eight games? 
case by case, day by day, smart minutes. You know, um, we just want to be careful. You know, we're still, even though we're, you know, we're through the scrimmage games, we're a couple weeks into this thing. Um, you know, we're still coming out of a four week, uh, I mean, a four month hiatus, you know, so, um, you know, we'll be intelligent down the stretch, uh, evaluating it on a daily basis. And, and again, the goal is to, to reach the playoffs uh, as, as in rhythm uh, and sharp as we possibly can uh, while managing the minutes the right way and being healthy. Chris? Fred, how much uncertainty or curiosity do you have about not just what you're going to see in your team over the next couple of weeks, but what other teams look like, who's in shape, who's not? I mean, even in scrimmages, you only get kind of a small taste of, of what the starters are about. Yeah, I mean, there's, there's definitely some uncertainty, but, um, you know, like I said, there, there's been a few weeks now that, that guys have had a chance to uh, get their legs in, uh, you know, under them, so to speak. And, you know, our, our expectation when any time we play anybody is to expect their best. And, um, you know, if, if we come in and the guys aren't in, in great shape um, or there's some, some, things, some unexpected things, you know, we know that can happen. But we're expecting teams to be at full strength and at their best. And Mark Medina? Frank, Danny and Anthony were saying the guys have talked among themselves about possible ideas of how they can protest uh, tomorrow. During those conversations, to what extent do you provide perspective or do you just kind of stay out of those discussions? Uh, just offer support to be aligned with whatever they decide. You know, and, um, you know, they've talked a little bit about it. You know, they're going to talk more uh, this evening, uh, come up with uh, what they feel like is the best plan. Uh, and, you know, I'll be a part of that and making sure that you know, our coaching staff that is out there is united in what we decide to do. All right, and I think Tanisha has a last question with Brian. Hey, hey Frank, um, you get, you've sort of mixed and matched all season long with the role guys and, and, and the bench and who gets some of those minutes. When you add players like JR and Dion who have maybe a little bit of a different skill set than you've had throughout the season, how does that kind of influence the process? Because you know, I would think it might change some of the combinations and, and, and things like that. How much do you feel like you can learn about that over the course of, of these eight games? Well, that's going to be one of the bigger goals of these eight games is uh, just seeing exactly how uh, those guys fit in and uh, you know what they look like with their different combinations of the guys that have already been here. Uh, we've had some very encouraging signs with both of them uh, in the first three scrimmage games and in, the, in all the practices that we've had. But you know, it's a it's a different animal when you're playing meaningful games. So. You know, we'll continue to see how the how that all plays out, but we feel good about um, what we would call good problems. You know, they're they're playing well, and um, we know they can step up and play bigger minutes if needed. But uh, you know, we'll, we'll we'll use these eight games to to get uh, to get enough of a look at them uh, to see how they they fit into the playoff picture.